Okay. What I'm after this time around, we got the ignition squared away on this truck. Now what I'm looking at is a uh, fuel mixture. I've got uh, a loping idle. It's hunting for idle. And um, you can see on the uh, pattern here, all you're really focused on at this point is the spark line. And you see how that spark line it starts down where it ought to, about 2 kV, 2,000 volts. But see how it's uh, curved up to the right and peaks? That's a pretty stiff peak on that. And what it indicates is I'm running lean. Now I can go to any cylinder. Let me put it on another cylinder. Yeah, let's see, get one in the back here. Alright. Same thing. We're still running kind of lean. And that affects all the cylinders. Now the question is just where we go from here. We need to go fuel delivery, uh, we can look for a vacuum leak. There's a lot of different ways, but all it's telling you is there's uh, more oxygen than there is fuel. Now, I'd already done this before, but we'll go back over it again uh, just for video. Um, there's an old fashioned test. Basically, all you're doing is uh, spraying starting fluid uh, just back here around your uh, where your gaskets are in the intake system. Now, uh, here we go. Hear that difference in the RPM? Okay, we know for a fact now there's a leak between the uh, throttle body right here and the plenum. That's a two-piece unit. It bolts together right there, right in there. So I know I've got a leak there. And what I'll do to confirm that is pull those vacuum lines and cap them. They go to the uh, canister perch, so it won't affect how the engine runs. I'm going to set that up and start up here again in a second. Okay, now what I've done is pulled the uh, vacuum lines. See if you can shot that vacuum up and up and up and up and up. There's two of them, these guys here. And I'll go ahead and spray some ether on that again. Verify that I'm not leaking back through those fittings, and I am leaking through the gasket. You can hear it change. Well, I know I've got a leak there, which we'll get you further along the line. Uh, solve that it might just take tape to tightening that up, or I might actually need a whole new gasket in there. We'll find that out in a bit. Anyhow, back to the scope. When you're looking at one of these uh, secondary waveforms, uh, let me see, I don't have a, anything to use as a pointer. Um, oh, darn it, hold on. Yeah. Thought I had something laying around here. Ah, there's a pen. There we go. All right, when you're looking at these signature, these uh, waveforms, like right in here is the voltage that that spark has started at inside your cylinder. Okay, and then you go on across, and that's your spark line. The duration is important. We're running right about, oh, 1.5 milliseconds or so, which that's healthy, that's good. But, what we're seeing, see this should be straight across, or you know, near to being straight across. But we're seeing a curve upwards. See that curve? And it's from the halfway point. See out through here, it's pretty level. And then that halfway point, she starts curving upwards. What that's telling you is in order to keep that spark going, it's requiring more voltage. And 
because there's a lot of resistance in there. Now there's only one way you're going to get more resistance. Well, there might be a couple, but the main thing we're concerned about is fuel. When you got fuel in that cylinder, it's wet. You know, let's make it just as simple as we can. And it conducts electricity really well. But when you got a dry cylinder, the one that doesn't have, you know, the correct air fuel uh, ratio is a 14 to 7, I believe, something like that. Um, it's going to be harder for that spark to stay going because it's going through dry air. So, you know, it's kind of like it's not, it's not wet in there. So as it's going along, and this is, you know, during a very short period of time, but you can see it on a scope. That's the cool thing about a scope. You're seeing that it's spiking up here. And it's requiring more and more voltage to keep that spark going for that duration of 1.5 milliseconds. It's just taking more and more energy. Now the energy's there, and it's able to tap it. But all you're seeing is increased resistance here. And that's internal to the cylinder. Everything from the halfway point on that uh, spark line is generally inside the cylinder. Back in here, that can be on the outside of the cylinder. You know, your wiring, uh, anything you know, from the distributor on or from the coil on. But in here, you're looking at actually your combustion. And you're seeing, because of that slope, she's running lean. Now, it should, like I say, it should run level. But if it slopes down, what that's telling you is there's decreasing resistance in there. It's not taking as much energy to keep the spark going. So it's actually dropping off over time. The voltage is dropping over time if that uh, tilts downwards, if that slopes downwards. Now that's typically what you'll see on either an engine that has low compression or uh, is running very rich. I mean it's just it's so wet in there, it, electricity is kind of lazy. It follows the least path of resistance. So I mean the wetter it is, the less uh, energy it has to put out. But anyhow, that's just to give you some kind of an idea. And I'll go ahead and fix that gasket, either tighten it or whatever, and then we'll go from there. All right, take care.